time for the reveal. Just let it drop. Oh, hey, that's pretty solid. That's uh, that's nice. Okay, so that's kind of what it's going to look like. Obviously, more level than that. Good morning. You're watching the Raw Project, and today we're going to be making some slabs, which will be the tabletop for our log bench. Now, before we get started. Hopefully everyone that's watching this has uh, already subscribed. If you haven't, well this is Bailey the Wonder Dog. Bailey, Bailey. And I'm sorry to say, if you don't subscribe, Bailey the Wonder Dog gets it today. <coughs> oh, of course, I'm only joking. Bailey the Wonder Dog would never be harmed. Let's get the, the bigger bar out. For your reference, what I do is I have a little medical kit just on a clip with my uh, yeah, bar wrench. So almost always, you can't sort of forget to take that with you. This chain's pretty sharp anyway, but I will give give this a sharpen, just a real quick sharpen. Yeah, Bailey in the background is busy entertaining himself, chasing a brick. Go figure, that daft dog. I think I better mix some more fuel as well for today because you certainly do go through the fuel when you're doing the milling. Just so the engine's just running on full bore for the whole time. So there you very quickly go through it. Because this is quite sharp already, I'll literally just give it a, a quick tickle up. Just to to re-face that, just to clean it up. Okay, so this is my setup for milling. Last time this was seen on video, a big branch had uh, dropped on it. So those black rails were, were, uh, were all bent. So I bought some more and fixed it up. This is the frame that I skim along. And obviously we've just you've just seen me sharpening up the uh, the Fanatec in a 660 with a 36 inch bar. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the excavator, get that fired up. Get the excavator fired up and then I'm going to pick up the longer log of these two. Which is way over 3.2 metres long. And I'm going to uh, make some cuts on the ends, take it down to somewhere near... 3.2 and see what the wood's like inside because you know it's sort of dubious as to whether it's going to be any good as you can see on the end there it's uh, it's not the best but who knows what it's going to be like inside the alternative is this one but this isn't 3.2 meters long right let's grab the excavator get this picked up cut some chunks off the end and see what sort of wood we've got Okay, so I'm going to do the first cut, this cut here, be about 400 off the end um, and we'll see what the wood's like inside, doing it 400, 400 mil, so that I can get, uh, get some firewood splits out of this if I really need to. <laughs>
Okay, so let's put a 400 mil cut off the end. But as you can see, the middle here is still still got some big holes in it. And the question is, with putting it at an angle, I could get a slab out this way. Let's just get the tape measure. Get 600 out of there, but I just don't know what these holes are going to look like. Well, I've got plenty of timber here. However, as you'll see, this log does taper down. We've only just got 600 at this end, so if I'm going to get a log out of this, it's going to be from that end. Okay, just been having a rethink on this, and I'm going to really struggle to get two boards 600 milli wide, 3.2 meters long, so that I can cover an area. The table would be 1200 by 3.2. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cut some boards. 1.2 meters long and I'll see what thickness I can get out or what width I should say that I can get out and I'll just work with that so instead of having two boards run along this way I'll have multiple boards running that way across the table and I'll have to build a, a simple wooden frame for them to rest on and not a lot else I can do because I'm just going to struggle I'm just going to struggle to get uh, any boards that sort of dimensions. It is nearly solid all the way through, there's just a little hole in there, so obviously the, the rock starts at that end and works its way through. We pretty much stop there, so I should get another couple of boards out of this. I'm cutting them around about 1400 long, and I've got a little bit, of, uh, little bit of wood to play with. So I'll cut this one in half as well, and then we uh, should be able to set this up the mill in. Okay, so the way that this works, as you can see I've got a steel plate there, a couple of cutouts which the rails of my guide sit in, and then um, yeah that's simply put on the uh, put on the end of the wood which has been roughly orientated in the right direction. I'm hoping to get a slab out across here. So I sit that in, put the first screw in, put a spirit level on the top, put the second screw in and that's set. And then come to this end, do a similar thing and if I I can I can kind of choose depending on what the log is whether I need to actually have the, the rail that sits on the top and need to have that parallel or if it's a log like this it's tapering down possibly don't need to it's it's important that I get the wood cut out of here if I was to do it parallel I may actually uh, run out of wood at that end whether it's tapering so let's get the other two the other end on and the guide on and then I'll show you what I mean. 
So that's it. So as you can see with the spirit level, hopefully you can see the middle bubble. So I've got that actually just tapering down. I'm not too worried about it being level that way, but it is level perpendicular to that, should we say, across the wood. And then the way this works, basically we get we get the chainsaw in here in the Alaskan chainsaw mill, set the bar, set the bar so that it cuts around about this area, this height, and then we pass all the way down, sliding down the down the frame here. All the way through to the end, take the whole lot off, and then the next cut we can actually ride on top of the wood. So let's get the let's get the chainsaw set up, get that in the mill, get the mill set to the right height, and then we'll bring it back. Okay, so that's all set up now. So let me tell you, that takes a lot of setting up. I've not used this since I uh, put the black bars on. I replaced the bent ones, and. Uh, yeah, to get it to fit over this log, I had to sort of move this cross member out that way a bit. You can sort of see where it was. So you've got to undo both of those. You've got to undo this. You've got to undo this. You then put put the chainsaw in, tighten it all back up again. And it's a case of going to this end and doing all sorts of uh, all sorts of adjustments. Clamping down here onto the bar, two places and then setting the height adjustment. So undoing, undoing those two, undoing those two, dropping the whole lot down, getting it level on one side. And I used a, basically a combination of a spirit level and tape measure just to make sure that that bar was sitting totally horizontal. So now it's just below the steel frame. You can see that so it just sits below the, below the steel frame. This is now ready to, yeah, ready to, ready to mill. Farmatech MS660 problems continue. So the cylinder block has come loose again, which is driving me nuts. This has happened a few times. I've tightened it up, I've lock tightened it, it's all been torqued down. This must be, I think, the fourth time this has happened. The bolts on there have got a uh, permanent, I think it's red. Red Loctite, the permanent fix stuff on. Torque down to the right uh, torque setting. And it's been running for quite a while. But, uh, yeah, as you can see there, it's come loose again. So that's it for today. Won't be doing any more milling now. The, the 462 I don't think would handle this bar. Although, possibly worth going and getting it and getting this job finished because um, yeah, otherwise I'm going to get nothing done today. So I think let's do that. Let's grab the grab the 462 and gently ease our way through this this piece of wood. It'll be be nice to see a slab with all the work I've done this morning already. So let me go grab the 462. We'll swap this out, take this home, do some more repairs on it, and uh, we'll come back in a few minutes and hopefully we'll have this uh, continuing. Right, we got the 462 on. It looks tiny, doesn't it, compared to the uh, compared to the 660? 
But listen, let's let's get it fired up, let's get it going. I think we can do this. I think we'll just have to go nice and easy working our way through this wood. No pushing, just just let it uh, let it cut. So let's get this fired up and see uh, see how we go. Here we have it. The 462 did get it done. The, uh, the end of the bar there was getting pretty hot towards the end. I had to stop and put a bit of extra oil on there, sort of um, yeah, a few inches from the end. But uh, listen, let's uh, let's now do a bit of a reveal. We'll take the top off and see what it looks like inside. Because that's the thing about slabbing. All this hard work that you do, you might actually end up with a real mess in the inside. So uh, yeah, let's take the top off and have a look. Right, so we can take the frame off. So as you'll have seen, there's a couple of wedges right towards the end there, and I uh, put two in at this end not long after I started, just to make sure that it didn't go collapsing back on the blade and tightening things up. Right, no time for the reveal. It's a bit of weight in that top. Just let it drop. Pretty solid. That's uh, that's nice. I wonder that took some cutting. That is one solid piece of wood. So what I'm going to do now is on this end. Obviously, there's a hollow piece, and there's a huge crack in there. So I'm think I'm going to do my slab. I'll get a tape measure, maybe 100 mil I think. We'll do a slab across there. I'm going to have to give this 36 inch bar a bit of a rest. As I say, the tip of that is very hot. So uh, we'll give that, give that 15 minutes to cool down. I'll have a look at it, see if there's anything obvious why it's heating up so much. Right, we've got a quick change of plan. How quickly I changed my mind, eh? Um, but I thought if I was, the next task would be to set the Alaskan chainsaw mill up to 100 mil depth to get a slab off of that one. And I thought, well, before I go and do that, I may as well just set this one up and uh, yeah, make a cut on this one, and then the next time I and and then move on to the third log, and then the next time I uh, set the Alaskan chainsaw mill, I can actually just whip through all three of them and get a 100 mil depth of slab off them. Saves me resetting and resetting and resetting the Alaskan mill. So let's uh, yeah, let's let's get the 462 onto this one. Get the top ripped off. Move on to the third one and get the top ripped off that as well. Okay, slab number two. Move to the 462 again. It's a uh, reveal time. Oh, 
Oh, I'm happy with that again. It's a nice, nice solid piece. And again, I've got plenty of room on the ends there to get at least a 100 mil slab out of it. Definitely 100 mil out of that. And this will be wider than wider than 400 mil. That's near near like 600 mil. Great. Let's uh, let's get this one moved out of the way, and we will get the third log lifted into position. And obviously, I'm just putting them on here just to lift it up, so it's uh, saved my back a bit. I've got the third log all set up. Ready for next time. So, like I say, I'll head off now. I'll take the chainsaws with me. I'll uh, I'll sharpen up the 36-inch chain, ready for ready for the next cuts. Do a little bit of work on the MS660, see if I can get that working again. Give and get that cylinder head tightened up. Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the Rural Project. So, today back here at the land. I'm already sweating. I've only been here an hour. I'm, it's another beautiful day. I think it gets 27 degrees, but there is a nice breeze, so that's, a, that's nice for a change. So the 462 was taken home last night. We, uh, we sharpened the chain. Had a little look at the bar to see why the tip was getting so warm and that was because the actual bar was just totally clogged up with with dust so we cleaned all the rails out on the bar hopefully that works a lot better now 462 is all uh, full of oil full of uh, full of fuel it's ready to go I did have a look at the uh, the Famatech ms660 when i got home but well, that's going to need a, a bit more work at the very least i'm going to have to sort of reseal the uh, reseal the head back onto the body or the gap the um the cylinder head back onto the body so that's going to be a, at least an overnight job to allow that to cure so i left that there and i'll tackle that one night this week right so let's get this thing fired up let's get into it we've got got one more log that needs its first cut on it and then once that's done we'll be able to set this alaskan chainsaw mill down to a depth of 100 mil and go through one two and then the third one off in the distance there, we'll go through all those three. We'll go through all those three and we will get them slabbed out. So we'll have a uh, hundred milli slabs, at least 400 wide, more like 600 wide and 1400 long. But I need them about 1200 so I can cut them down afterwards. Right guys, let's get this, uh, let's get this chainsaw fired up and let's get into this. Too sure how long that took. Felt like about 15 minutes. I think I'll time the next one to see uh, how long it takes to, to do these cuts. Well, let's get that chainsaw pulled out of the way. We'll do a bit of a look and see what and see what the wood's like underneath. Okay, so that's what this one looks like. As you can see, compared to the others, this one's got a few a few more holes and sort of fissures in it. So um, rotten pieces. I think some of this. No, it's sort of rotted wood, but it's also there's a lot of a lot of pitch in there. Right, so let's set the uh, set the sawmill at a hundred milli depth, and then we'll go through. Oh, I might as well go through this one since I'm so close to it. And uh, let's see what an actual slab looks like. I'll actually set my uh, set my watch going as well. See how long it takes, and I'll bring you guys back once this is ready for. Slab reveal. Okay, so I just finished the slabbing 100 milli thick. Just out of interest, it took uh, just over a, a tank of fuel. For that, it actually run out of fuel with about 10 centimeters to go. And it also used a full tank of oil. And it took me 25 minutes. It's quite a 
it's quite, it's quite hard work pushing it through, sort of constant pushing it for that half an hour. But uh, right, let's have a look at this slab and see what we think. It's interesting. It's kind of a bit of rough looking in the middle there. So I'm guessing that's where it's just started to rot. Have a look on this side. Oh yeah, listen to that. Trash, trash in the middle. Yeah, band, band down the middle there of soft wood, which is supposed to come out in here as well. So that will be the same. Can't hear it as much there, but definitely hear it on this. Now, well, of the three, this was the questionable one because we didn't really know what that end was going to be like. And obviously, this this mess here sort of continues all the way through. So we won't cut any more boards out of that one. No slabs. We'll cut slabs out of that one, and we'll get, we'll definitely get a few out of this. It will be interesting. We end up, we end up um, sort of cutting a board here, having all of that, and then maybe just having that piece. I'm also be carrying all the way through and be trash, and there might be a board underneath there as well. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, you find out, unfortunately, it's not doing. So I think what I'll do is I'll, just out of interest, I'm going to take this board down, have a look at the uh, the table, see what it's going to look like with it on, see if I can get any ideas as to how I'm going to fix it. Right, let's get it down there. Okay, so that's kind of what it's going to look like. Obviously, more level than that. So we've got a bit of levelling to do on these. It's a little bit higher on that side than it is now. A little bit lower on that side. That's 1400 wide. Yeah, I think if there's a 100 mil taken off each end, it'll be just about perfect. So the question and the thought on my mind now is how do I continue that shape all the way along? So the two end pieces will be fine. I'm thinking of the one, two, three, four, make some slots in here. And then get some get some treated treated pine, 35 35 milli by 90 or 45 by 90, so 90 90 mil deep, almost four inches deep. Put a slot in here and have that sat in there, sat on the other side, and then sit each of these slabs on top. That's the only way I can see you doing this really. Hopefully four of those at 90 mil. Would be, uh, would be enough and be strong enough, I would think it would be. So as we've seen, this is this is going to work out very nice. Pretty happy with this. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to do any more boards again today. The sun seems to have come out. It's taken me quite a few hours to sort of get set up. And I do have three or four trees that came down by the dam. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll, um, now I've, I've sort of checked out this board and and it's what I'm after. I just need to get more of those done. So, but I think that's going to be more of a more of a job when uh, when things are a little bit cooler. It's difficult to come and do this first thing in the morning because obviously you're you're basically running your chainsaw out full bore for the whole time. 
So I think it might be something I could start coming and doing after work, sort of five o'clock-ish and do a do an hour or two while it's cool, but, um, but obviously I'm not disturbing people early in the morning. So I think I might go do that and um, yeah, I'll pack some of those tools up and then I'll grab the excavator and go head over, head over to the dam and pick a few of those logs up. All right, well, for this video, thanks for watching. When uh, next time I come back, we'll cut some more boards. Hopefully I'll have the pieces of timber ready and uh, we'll start getting this thing closer and closer to being finished.